Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at variable oxidation states and cobalt chemistry in particular. So in this video we're going to look at two main types of cobalt iron that we're interested in. We're also going to look at the oxidation of uh, cobalt 2 plus uh, in alkaline solution and that will be a hydroxide based compound. We're also going to look at oxidation of the uh, same iron using ammonia which is NH3. We're also going to look at the complex formation and we're going to look at the colours of these things as well. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at the two main ions that we're looking at. And this is cobalt 2 plus and cobalt 3 plus. Now, these, if we start with cobalt 2 plus, cobalt 2 plus can be oxidised in two different ways uh, depending on um, what um, solution you dissolve it in. So, for example, when we oxidise um, cobalt 2 plus, uh, in alkaline solution, we can use something called hydrogen peroxide, which is a really powerful oxidizing agent, and we can form cobalt 3 plus complexes then. We can also oxidize it uh, when we dissolve it in ammonia, and then we can even use oxygen just in the air to oxidize it because of the instability of the ammonia complex that we form, uh, and that's what we'll look at in a minute. So we're going to start just by looking at um, using uh, oxidizing them using an alkaline solution using hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to start over here. I've color coded this in blue so we can see uh, where it matches. So if we take our cobalt two plus complex uh, and react it with hydrogen peroxide uh, in an alkaline solution, so in the presence of something like sodium hydroxide, then we form cobalt three plus and two lots of OH minus. Now you can see that cobalt 2 plus is actually a pink compound uh, when it's dissolved in solution. It's quite a bright pink colour. And uh, when we add it to peroxide, we form cobalt 3 plus. However, cobalt 3 plus as a hexa aqua form is really, really unstable and actually doesn't actually and doesn't actually exist uh, in this form when we react it. And actually, what normally exists and what we normally form because of the presence of the hydroxide ion, if we have enough of them then we will form this, which is a cobalt hexa uh, hydroxide complex. So this is your OH. So instead of having six waters surrounding your cobalt, you have six OH minuses. Uh, and because each hydroxide has got a minus charge, the cobalt is, has a three plus charge. Each hydroxide has got a minus charge. So three plus complex originally, plus the six minuses will give an overall charge of three minus. Um, and this is um, formed as a solution. So normally, um, this is a really simplified equation, and we're just showing you as cobalt 2 plus go to cobalt 3 plus. But the exam board may decide to uh, tell you what ligands to put on here. And as a stable form, normally it would be something like cobalt uh, HOH6 complex over here, and that will form cobalt OH6 3 plus complex over here. And that shows that. We haven't got a colour change because of ligand substitution, but we've got a colour change because of the change in oxidation state. Okay, the one that they're really interested in is this one though, because you get different types of compounds that are being formed, and this is oxidation using ammonia. Now, ammonia uh, effectively acts as a base, or it can act as a ligand, depending on the amount of ammonia that you put into it. So if we add a small amount of ammonia to our hexa aqua cobalt complex then effectively it acts as a base and the definition of a base of a Bronsted Lowry base is a proton acceptor and in small quantities ammonia will act as a base so here's the ammonia here and effectively what happens is we've got this cobalt hexa aqua I've got six waters surrounding it it's a two plus complex and what happens is the one ammonia molecule will remove a proton from this side and one ammonia molecule will remove a proton from this ligand here. And effectively what we've got left, and I'll rub these out and do it as we go. So we've got this water ligand, apparently the one ammonia takes this, so we take that off from there. And what we're left behind is an OH. Now OH is a minus charge. And what this does is it reduces the charge of the complex from two plus to a single plus. But we also have um, another ammonia and this will take another proton away from a different water ligand. And you can see now we've got effectively two lots of OH minus. And again, because that minus charge, because we've got another minus charge, effectively we have 
a complex that doesn't have a charge at all. Now, complexes with charges are soluble in solution and so therefore will exist as a solution. But when we have a complex with no charge whatsoever, uh, effectively this forms a precipitate and this effectively precipitates out and we call this a solid because it's a precipitate that's formed, well precipitate is just a solid that's formed in solution. And this compound is effectively blue. So we have four water ligands left and you can see here I've got cobalt H2O4 OH2 S because we've got two OHs that are joined on here. Now this is stable and that's why we only need a small amount of NH3 is just enough to form a neutral complex, in other words, a one with no charge. And that's why we only need two NH3s, because we only needed two to remove two protons to form this stable complex. And obviously we form an ammonium ion, which is down here. But the colour change is we go from pink solution to blue precipitate. And that's what we form with the cobalt one. Now, this obviously acts as a base because it removes protons. If we were to go a little bit further though, we can effectively add more ammonia, and we call this an excess. Uh, and an excess is basically um, where we add more than we need. Now, the amount that we need, um, effect, well, effectively, the ammonia here acts as a ligand, not as a base. So it's going to try and pull off all six, or displace all six ligands around the cobalt. So because we have six ligands around the cobalt, the amount of ammonia that we need is six. And so this is what we've got here. Here's our cobalt. Uh, H2O4, OH2, this is the complex that we had up here, that we formed up here. This is a solid, because it's a precipitate, and if we add six ammonias to displace all six ligands from this cobalt, that's effectively what we class as excess, uh, we form this, cobalt NH3, six aqueous, and this has got a two plus charge. So effectively we formed a solution again. The reason why we formed a solution is the fact that we've got a charged complex back again, and this is soluble in solution. So this will form a yellow, creamy, um, aqueous solution. And obviously the ligands that were attached on here are now separated, so we have 4H2O and 2OH- on the right-hand side. Okay, but this is really, really unstable, uh, and it doesn't exist in this form for very long. Uh, and just aerial oxidation, so this means oxidation using oxygen just from the air, is enough to actually oxidize this cobalt two plus complex into a cobalt three plus complex. Um, and this is cobalt hexa ammonia complex, which is the name of this one. Uh, and this is a orange solution. Again, we know it's a solution because the complex is charged and any charged complex will be soluble in solution. So um, this might be um, yellowy orange, it, it just depends on the color, but I would check with the uh, exam board as to the exact color that they are expecting. Um, but that's it, that's cobalt chemistry, there's your oxidations, hope that helps, bye.